Good morning. Good morning. Financial Fridays, I know I've been away a lot, but look at this. They got us, turn your mug around. They, I know it's backwards for you guys, but look at this. They got us mugs at Colt Snack General Store with our name on it, and they wash we it all be week. Somebody. Yeah, well, today we're somebody, but um, where everybody knows your name. Now they'll know my name because it's, like it's cheers, got my mug. It's like cheers for coffee. Cheers for coffee at Colt Snack General Store. This was my idea, and now it's brought to fruition. Yes. Yay! Um, and they wash it for you. So you come here every day, and there's a clean mug waiting for you. Very exciting. But what I want to talk about that is I'm on the road again I'm leaving um, tomorrow for Europe again and I want to talk to my financial expert about changing money because in Italy the fees and the hidden fees was almost 20 percent so if you changed a hundred dollars besides the conversion rate there was a fee of twenty dollars uh, 20 American dollars for every hundred that you changed so I finally remembered that it was that, that I had some ATM cards that didn't have any fees attached to it. Well, there's multiple. There's actually multiple fees, especially when you use an ATM card. So let's use the ATMs first, and then regular credit cards that you do in a restaurant. So an ATM fee, ATM card has basically three levels of fees. Okay. The first fee is the currency. You're going to go from U.S. dollars to, in this case, in Italy, it's euro, and it will be the pounds. So there's a currency exchange rate that gets calculated, and that changes every day. The second fee is a, um, a bank fee. There's a bank, because the bank that you have here, whether it's Bank of America, whatever the chase, the bank that you bank here that has the name on the card, that to sponsor that card, has a deal with, in Italy it may be... Italia or you know, wherever it's, whatever it's going to be. The bank, the bank also has a fee, so that's the second so fee. So my, my card says well, that there's no foreign transaction fee. Right. Is that a foreign transaction that's fee? That's the foreign transaction fee. And then if you go to an ATM, the ATM charges usually a 3 to $5 per transaction or a percentage of the transaction deal. So you got the currency exchange rate, the bank to bank, fee and then the ATM fee for the, mach the ATM machine. So when you get whacked, when you go to an ATM machine in in Europe specifically. And this is true in the Far East, this is true in Russia, this is true everywhere. Is whacked a financial term? Whack is the official <laughs> the official technical term. You get whacked. That's the Brooklyn term. The Brooklyn, the Brooklyn term, term, yeah, exactly. Well Brooklyn it means something different, so let's like let's stay away from Oh yeah, that. exactly. So there's a couple of things you can do. There are banks that get rid of, nobody gets rid of the exchange rate. You're always going to pay the exchange rate fee. Right? There's always going to be a, a, trend, a transaction. Okay. The other two things, there are cards that are out there that don't charge international fees. You have to do some research. We're not going to promote any of the cards today, but there are very easily things based with the help of Google that you could go on and just search on the internet to find out what they are. And the don't think it's a little bit of money. It's worth the effort to do a little research. It can be up to 20% of the transaction fee. So you can take it out 100 get hit by 20 bucks. It's a pretty substantial amount. And those that are relatively frugal, like you know, like Janet and I, that's a lot, that's a big hit. It bothered, it would bother me almost it all. It really day. bothered me. So the, there, there are cards out there now. I'm, a, I'm actually going to Europe on Wednesday, so I'm going to Spain. I need euros. Um, I did a little bit of a research, again, a little sort of deeper dive online to figure out companies that are out there from a promotional perspective, thanks, refund all of the fee three ATM fees. Wow. So I could go to, with this card, and it's one of the financial institutions, one of the brokerage companies that are out there. So I opened up an account that I didn't have to have an account minimum on, and I got a card, an ATM, I put a thousand. U.S. dollars in there that I'm going to use as my ATM. Okay. So I can go to an ATM, any ATM, because this company happens to be a large broker, broker, and I'm going to go and use that ATM card and not have to worry about the fees. So you can go to any ATM. Any ATM, because they're going to refund on my statement every month all the fees that are associated. All, all three. I'm still going to have to pay my currency transaction, euro to dollar transaction. But I don't have to worry about the other two fees, which could be anywhere from three dollars a transaction to ten percent of the transaction. They charge every bank, especially in Europe. When you go to a smaller one, there's a lot of smaller banks when you travel overseas. So the next thing I want to talk about is so do your research. Do your research. This is my protection method that I carry my money on me. 
The other thing I want to say, and I know I've said this before, is make sure that you have a copy of everything that's in your wallet, in your luggage, in a separate place, your passport, your GOES card, your driver's license, your credit cards, both sides, so that in case for some reason you have an incident, you have, you're able to make a phone call and be prepared. So what do you think is the best way to protect yourself when you're in a foreign country where there's a lot of pickpockets and there's a lot of bad people? Yeah, you have, you have to be aware when you travel. You're, you're pretty much a target, especially Americans are pretty naive. When we go overseas, we stick out like sore thumbs. But the way we dress, the way we act, the way we sort of like... The case, shoes we case wear. Of the architecture, everything. You know, yeah. we just, we're targets. So you have to be... In a demographically shifting world, specifically in Europe. Wow, that's a great course. smart. That's a great word. Demographically I'm trying shifting. Trying to be politically correct here, okay. because the reality is, is that these places have become, you know, nefariously and famously known for pickpockets. I mean, Rome is just known for it. It's Las Ramblas in Spain, known for it. You know, Barcelona, you know, just known for these these. And, and because the economies are so challenged over there that people, when they get desperate, do desperate things. And, you know, it's a sort of petty felony to be able to pickpocket somebody, and especially if you're an easy target. And target's not, not just a store, it's got something on your back when you go to Europe, so be careful. And usually in every room there is a safe, so that don't carry every single thing with you. You don't need every single thing with you. Be a little prepared. Don't just say, oh, I'm sure I'll protect myself. They are quick, they bump into you, there are crowds, and you can be a victim so easily. So really make sure that you're like protected and aware. Well, there's all um, kinds of, they sell all kinds of things, right? There's these bra wallets that you can get. Remember Fanny Packs from like the 70s and 80s? Yeah, they used to I got they're one. Bad. They're big in Europe. Right? I got one and they're, they're in style again. They're in style. Hey, this is a designer one. Exactly, well, of course it is. But, but, Basically, it's a way to know where you can't be naive about where your money is. Check your zippers, make Nothing sure that it's close to you. And the thing is, is that don't keep everything out. Like maybe on the inner layer, put something. But like, be prepared. It's, it's secured it's, in your hotel room. You leave stuff in your hotel room. Also, I've heard stories about people having hotel rooms. It's your job to protect. It's your job to protect yourself, protect your money, know what you're getting into. So how much do you think it's necessary? Like I always, I travel a lot, so I always save like 20 dollars, 20 euros, 20 pounds, 20 whatever Canadian dollars. So my next trip I start off with at least 20 dollars in case I need it. Do you think that you ever need any money to start? I think if you're a frequent traveler and you do that, it doesn't hurt. But if you're a one-off, once a year, once every other year, it depends on how quickly. You can go to the bank. I, I went to a local bank, a national bank, um, and just converted in two days, you know, with the current exchange rate. And I'll show you a little app that oh. you have on your phone. He has um, an app. I'm going to get this app. I'm downloading this app. What's it called? Uh, this all kinds of your exchanges. I want to this, one, the, this one happens to be an app on the phone, if you can see that. But it's an app on the phone. And basically what it is, is I put... Can't, they can't you can't see, see this. Basically, what I do is, if I'm shopping and something's a hundred euro, it does a translation for me, and I know. So I'm on the street, and, I'm, and especially if I have a glass of sangria or a glass of wine, I want to <laughs> be able to do the math. And the exchange rate right now is about you know dollar fifty per dollar. So that's not easy math to do. You got to carry the one. And if you're walking Las Ramblas or you're walking the Vatican, you gotta sort of be thinking. So you have this, this technology. Throw it on your phone. There's all kinds of great things like that that you can put on the phone. But it's good to know. So what you do is you go to the bank and just you go to your bank. If you have a bank account at the bank, you say I want spent just a couple pocket change, just for taxis and, th and for things of that nature. You put them on, get a hundred or a couple hundred or whatever you're comfortable with as far as money. I never do that. He's prepared. I, do. I don't do that. I just get it to the country. It requires a little day, couple of days of advance planning. I just get to the country and then I change some money because I have credit cards and most places take credit cards and Uber works there too. I, so I have a list. I have a vacation list that I use that I modify for each vacation. I, I'm a list maker and I believe it's about preparation. It's like when you're not prepared, whether it's food or whether it's a meeting or whether Okay, it's I'm always prepared with food. I'm prepared with an empty <laughs> glass. I'm prepared with a mug. 
But I'm maybe we could maybe we could day. send everybody a vacation list and put one of these things on the vacation list as currency that you have to worry about, which is what we're talking about today. So. Some people on the, the people fanny pack. pack. The fanny pack. Okay, so you know what? We'll we'll create a vacation list now that I know how to do it. You'll yeah, we'll be put able to put it on a link. We'll put it on a link. We'll, we'll be able to give you a vacation list. Um, have a really great time. I don't know exactly for the next two and a half weeks when my coffee time will be because of the time difference. But I promise you, the next time you hear from me, I will be across the pond. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. I hope these tips help you. Cheers. Bye.